Hi, in this video I'm going to show you what the offset function does and offer a basic scenario on how it could be used. So let's say, for example, we have these two tables where we're looking at different scenarios for price. These are different levels here, maybe one level to level four. We also have the quantity of which something is sold. And we also have the, dif the different scenarios here, one to five, and also the different levels from one to four. And we have our little scenario picker. So if we change the price, let's say we change it to one, and we're gonna pick scenario one here. And let's say we pick scenario four here, and it's going to change those particular values there. So we have our row 50 to 100 here, 50 to 100 here, and our quantity four here, which is 40 to 40 here, and we get our revenue by multiplying those. And so this gives us a option to choose different scenarios based on price and quantity and get some values out of there. So you can see those numbers have changed because they're using the offset function. And let's see how we can go through that. Let's delete these values and go through the process of creating the offset function or using the offset for this. Now in a summary, what offset does is it refers to a cell that's a specific distance from another cell. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna identify a source cell and go down or up a couple rows or go left and left and right a couple columns. And if I type in offset here, click on that, double click that. And if I click on the offset hyperlink here, our navigation will show you what the arguments it takes. So it takes about three required arguments, the reference, the row, and the column. If these are the optional ones, height and width, I'll go through those maybe a little bit later on, on how those work. But let's see how we do this. So the reference cell, what we're gonna do is you wanna take from the price, we're gonna to go to this table and take a reference. So we're gonna go with this reference. We're gonna say, we're gonna start off at cell B7. And with B7, I'll put it into, I'll make it an absolute cell reference by putting the dollar signs in front, press the F4 key. And basically once I copy it over to the other cells, that cell reference is gonna stay the same. So what, uh, how, what, how many rows do I need to go down? Well, I'm gonna go down based on this picker here. This says, I'm gonna go down one row. And in this situation, it's planned out where this is gonna be the first row, even says scenario one is the first row, scenario two is the second row, scenario three, third, fourth, and fifth, right? So it identifies that row here in this vertical or this column. Now for the, for the columns, how many rows do I wanna go over? Well, this is the same here. We have our levels here. One, this is the first column, second column, third column, fourth column. So I'm gonna identify the reference here. So I'm gonna click on that. Also with these, since I'm gonna copy this formula over, I need to put in a reference cell here. I wanna stay with the particular I4. I wanna make sure that doesn't get moved over. So press the F4 key there to lock that in. So, and if it gets copied over, that reference doesn't change, I4 doesn't change. For J3, that will change a little bit because as I copy it over, it's gonna go from J3 to J K3 to L3. So I'm gonna lock in the three, but not lock in the letter. So I just put a dollar sign in front of that and close parentheses, press enter, and now you see $50 here. So if I copy this over, you're gonna see that it's copied over 60, 75, 100. If I pick something with like Scenario, scenario number five, press enter. You can see that it is brought in that too. So we're gonna do the same thing here for quantity. Type in offset, press tab. My reference cell is going to be B19. Press the F4 key to lock that in, comma. How many rows? Well, that's gonna be based off the stock picker here. It's gonna go down four, row, four rows. One, two, start from there. One, two, three, four, which is that one and also lock that one in because I'm gonna copy it over, comma, and then column. So I'm gonna reference this column, J3 again, and also put the dollar sign in front of the three because um, I really don't need it there when you think about it because I'm only copying across. But if you're in a situation where you're copying uh, down and across, you probably would need it. But I usually like to do this and I'll just put a dollar sign in front of the number there. Press enter and copy that over. Click the fill handle and just copy that over and you see now we've got our four here, 40, 53, 67, 40, which is these values here. If I change it around, maybe type two, now it's gonna go, go two down and bring in 33, 44, 55, and 33. And of course, this is just the multiplication of 
these two values. So I mentioned before there are the two additional arguments or optional arguments at the end. Let's, let's see what those do. I'm going to take this particular formula, Control-C to copy, press Escape, and just paste it into the cell here. Control-V to paste. And if I delete this parentheses, the tip will come up and click, press the comma, and we have our option to add the height. And so what height does is it'll bring in the additional cells that you would include in it. So we have here where it, it brings in from row two to and, and column one here, 33. So if we add height there, we can say, okay, give me the additional, if I put in like maybe three, so indicate that the height is going to encompass three cells, the cell here that includes 33, 36, and 40. So if I close parentheses and press enter, now you notice that it's brought in those cells. And similar with the other, the other argument, the last argument here we're talking about with, it's going to do, instead of up the column, it's gonna go across the row. So if I do a, add another column or a comma here and do the width, maybe you wanna add the width and have all four of these cells included. So if I press four, close parentheses, press enter, now it's gonna include all those four cells that are part of that. So that's the usage of those last two arguments there. But for the most part, the way I've seen offset use is if you wanna bring back a value, offset a number of rows and number of columns from a source. So that's how you can use the offset function. That's what it could be used for. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.